Welcome everybody, I hope you guys are doing well. Today we will talk about hiking the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu and I'm going to be joined by our guide in Peru who's going to help us understand what the whole trek entails and he will help us answer some of the questions that I've been receiving over the past few days. Let me introduce you to uh, Roger. He's going to be our guide when we go to Peru and he is the same guy that I hiked the Inca Trail with back in 2018, if I'm not wrong. So, Roger, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll go ahead and start. Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Roger. Um, I'm actually a, a tour guide for about a 14, almost 15 years ago. Uh, I've been hiking a lot, actually. Uh, I started my job, actually, uh, hiking... Uh, locally like Cusco area and after I went above I so I went up to other countries such as Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, a, uh, Ecuador um, and also part of North America where I actually have a bit of sense how hiking can be in different countries so I've been also into uh, day trips such as you know city tours, Sacred Valley tours around my city I've been traveling also with groups around Peru area, so I, I, I think I have a bit of experience <laughs> in terms of like, you know, hiking and day trips in general. Um, yeah, I'm, so I'm here with now Trekking Pals, a, uh, uh, trying uh, to actually bring groups to my country, uh, Peru, and do some hiking here uh, in uh, Cusco region. So. If anybody uh, it's scared, if anybody it's thinking about it, if anybody thinks maybe I'll get sick in the altitude, well, let me tell you that maybe you should be, <laughs> because hiking is not actually uh, um, that easy sometimes, especially in high altitudes, but you guys will get help from us, you know, from Trucking Pals and Cusco area will be the operator of first step expeditions that we are willing to actually work with people and 99% of the groups I guided succeeded. Sorry, 99.99%. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Made it to Machu Picchu. Hiking, hiking on the Inca Trail, different hikes in Cusco and well, for this for today, I think we're planning on talking just about the Inca Trail, probably. Yeah. So thank you for the for the intro, Roger. And uh, I'm I'm really I was lucky that I did the Inca Trail with you because I remember stories from when I did it, and I was not as prepared as I, as I should have been at that time. <laughs> but it was still a wonderful adventure. But anyway, so for yep. today, um, what I want us to do, I want us to focus just on the Inca Trail and hiking the Inca Trail. Mm -hmm. And again, there are different trails. Um, to get to Machu Picchu, but we will focus on the classic Inca Trail to Machu Picchu because this is what we are doing for our group trip from November 6th to November 16th. So maybe, um, Roger, let's start with the general overview for somebody who doesn't know what the Inca Trail, what the classic Inca Trail um, entails. Well, I mean, a the details about the trail, it's actually challenging but doable. I mean, the altitude is probably one of the main things that most of people are afraid of. But uh, well, when I when I actually take people to Machu Picchu on the four-day Inca Trail, uh, most of people do feel the altitude, but sometimes it makes it worse when people actually are not, are, are not uh, careful with bacteria, like touching animals, touching I don't know different rocks that they can get a bacteria and sometimes they eat things with their hands. So people sometimes get bacteria and they can also get sick and adding on it, the altitude can be an issue. Actually, usually from Cusco City, we tend to leave by three or uh, by four in the morning and get to the head of the trail by uh, 7, 30, 8 in the morning. So we normally start hiking by 8, 30, you know, and the total length of the Inca Trail is only about a um, 26 and a half, almost 27 miles, which is actually a bit more than one normal marathon. We'll basically do a marathon in four days, so they give us plenty of time to actually enjoy the hike in our own pace. Yeah. So 
day one, it's actually called as a training day. The, the trail is not that bad. It's kind of flat-ish until lunch. And after lunch, we gain some elevation. Actually, the first campsite, it's located at 10,300 <clears throat> feet roughly, which is around uh, 3,300 uh, meters, like 3,300 meters. You know, so it's kind of a bit lower than Cusco City. Uh, so the day one, usually I call it as a training day because we'll try to get into the trail in our own pace and kind of test ourselves, you know, how the trail will be, will feel like in the following days. So day one, as I said, you know, it's called as a training day where the morning hike is not that bad, just the afternoon hike. It's some elevation gain until our first campsite. The second day is actually known as the challenging day, as probably you remember, eh, eh, Senorita. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Haviva, uh, because we tend to do the day, the the second day, we we conquer two uh, mountains. The first one is actually known as Dead Woman's Pass. And the second one is Runkurakai Pass, having lunch in between the two mountains. I usually said, and I normally say, if we reach the highest point, which is Dead Woman's Pass, the Inca Trail is already done. Yeah, because obviously that will be the highest point of our trek. And once we get there, there is only one way, and that will be Machu Picchu, Inca City. But to be able to get to the highest point of the Inca Trail is actually a good climb. The climb is it's actually for about a, a from three three hundred meters up to four two hundred meters. So it's around <clears throat> a one thousand two hundred meters. So that will make like almost four thousand feet elevation gain on the second day. So. After the top, it's just like an hour and a half downhill. So the campsite is like around 12,000 feet. So the highest point of the Inca Trail is at 13,800 feet. So the Inca Trail after Dead Woman's Pass, and we go down to lunch, will drop some elevation. And after gain a lot of elevation to the second pass, but the second pass is not as high as the first one, as Dead Woman's Pass. Yeah, so that will make it maybe a bit easier, uh, the hike. But in the while we're hiking, it's not just like walking with our heads down and just, you know, being thinking about who we're going to make it or no. So we're going to do a lot of breaks. We're going to just enjoy the landscapes. We're going to take photos, group photos, individual photos. We're going to stop. Or toilets probably that's one of the main concerns for a lot of people maybe I'll get the question soon or I, will, I can also also tell you but on the trail there are toilets um, the views on the Inca trail will be probably the motivation for a lot of people yeah because every step you take is usually a photo opportunity or a view opportunity you know even if we stop for toilet on the way like find a happy bush on the way the views are just amazing, where people usually said I had the best toilet stop in my life because I had an amazing view, you know. So that can be also good motivation for a lot of people. Well, usually day two, we tend to hike for about uh, nine to ten hours. Uh, we usually try to reach our campsite before it gets dark. So by November, the days will get a little longer, so it gets dark by 6, 6.30 p.m. Um, so usually we want to get to the campsite by 5, 4.30 p.m. So we love, uh, and we also do, uh, or start hiking early in the morning. You know, we love to do that when we have good breeze, you know, and it's cooler because sometimes during the day it can get really hot, and that can be uncomfortable too for a lot of people. But I'm not promising that we're going to hike just in the shade. You know, there will be sun exposure. We're going to enjoy the sun too, sun heat too on the hike. So day two became to be a challenging day because, you know, of the climb of two mountain passes and having a long distance covering uh, and reaching the campsite uh, actually by <clears throat> 5 p.m. and obviously enjoying all the Inca, original Inca, uh, highway or Inca Trail that is also one of the reasons why people do this beautiful trek, you know. 
Well, the third day is, is not too bad. You know, I, I actually call the third day as the happy day because it's only a morning hike. Um, but the elevation drop is for about 3,300 feet drop. So uh, if anybody will ask me, it's like a lot of uphill and downhill, yes. Yeah, there is a lot of uphill and downhill. So if you need any training, well, I will recommend you guys to actually get into stairs up and stairs down. Yeah, but all of the stairs are actually pretty nice too, and the view is still rewarding and all of that. On the third day, we get to our campsite by usually noon or 1 p.m. at most. We have lunch and free afternoon, you know, where people usually try to rest and lie down and recover and get some energy back so the four days the Machu Picchu day from the last campsite to Machu Picchu it's only two hour hike so we should be reaching a um, Machu Picchu Inca city by seven in the morning you know and by that time or during May usually the sun rises happen by that time by 6 47 in the morning so we're lucky that day we probably will reach Machu Picchu for the sunrise guys Mm -hmm. And obviously that after Machu Picchu Inca City guided tour and all of that, we need to take the bus to go down to the town and actually get a train to get back home or back, but get back to Cusco, you know. Hopefully we all will go back to Cusco and be in the city by, let's say, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. at most. So the trail, once more, guys, starting from day one and, the, and ending on the last day, doable. Most of people I guided, you know, they never did something like this before. And that will be an example maybe of Habiba that is probably telling you that she wasn't ready for that, but she made it. You know, it's it's usually, a, I'm not saying that you don't have to train. You need to train. Um, but I, I, do, I do want you to have, you know, a positive mind because most of the things we do in terms of adventures, it's 90% mental and 10% physical. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I agree with you. I feel like day two was certainly the toughest day. But then once that day is over, you feel like you're having much more fun mm -hmm. on the trail for day three and four. It's mu much more leisure hiking than really fighting to make your way up. Mm -hmm. So, um, Roger, one of the questions, I'm going to ask you some of the questions that I've been receiving. The first um, concern or question is, what happens if somebody will start on the trail first day maybe second day they're not feeling very well on on the mountain on on the trek what are the options for trekkers in case they have to go back um i mean it, depending of the of where it happens if the problem happens after that woman's past the highest point you know there's only one way and obviously we'll try and will help the person doing different little things. But if the person gets sick before the pass, there's chances of going back to Cusco or, you know, or back to kilometer 82. Okay. Um, in this case, would it be accompanied with either my second guide or another guide or a porter that will actually take the person all the way to kilometer 82. Yeah. Uh, on the Inca Trail, it's not allowed to actually use helicopters or have a helicopter, helicopter lift, yeah? Um, it, so walking will be, and depending what it happen, it can be on a stretcher, but rarely, rarely happens these uh, problems, you know? And usually on day one is when people, you know, feel like, feel the, the 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 problems like either having altitude problems or maybe getting a bacteria for something that they ate in Cusco City or somewhere else mm -hmm. uh, so, uh -huh. so so there is there is an option should anything go wrong it's not that you are stuck there you can get medical attention if necessary and you can go back to kilometer eight or the start of the trail yeah in um this nearby, well, not near, like an hour away from the first campsite uh, or close to our first campsite, there is a little clinic from the village. So if there is any emergencies, also the clinic can ask you, well, the, 
the client need to go to the clinic, obviously accompany it with us. We can take the person and see what is gonna, what's happening, you know. But once the person gets the option of like, or, or things like she, they need a clinic, obviously the person will need to go back to kilometer 82. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so the clinic, on, not in kilometer 82, on the trail before, before camp for day one? Yeah. yeah, day one, like near or close to our first campsite, there is a small clinic, but that is actually from the village. Okay. But they can always see people and tell us maybe what is the problem. I will probably tell us like the person need to go back. And also since there are communities on day one, it's possible to hire a horse and ride the horse back to kilometer 82 in, in case the person is not able to walk anymore. Oh, perfect. That, that's very good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the other question that I received is about uh, high altitude sickness. Obviously, this is something to expect on the Inca Trail. Uh, from your experience, what tips or advice do you have for people or things to do before the trek or during the trek to avoid high altitude sickness? Well, altitude sickness, it's actually uh, it's something that that is unpredictable, you know. Probably the nice thing about altitude sickness is that it doesn't discriminate people. <laughs> uh, and uh, depending how you are, but like scientifically proved, like if people have like big muscles, you know, these people, these boys or ladies, you know, need more oxygen. Um, and also by drinking water, sometimes it's not enough if the person is tall or a bit large, you know. So I usually recommend to bring powder electrolytes. The ones that people use when they are dehydrated. Uh, electrolytes, like we buy sometimes like Gatorade, Powerade. In my personal opinion, that's useless because those drinks, they only have sugar. Um, and that's something that it doesn't really help as much with the, you know, dehydration. One of the symptoms of altitude sickness has been dehydrated. So if you bring powder electrolytes that can actually uh, help you in cases of dehydration, that will help you a lot. Yeah. Um, in Cusco, in Cusco city, we actually have a small fluid, this one. I don't know if you try it. I'll take it on the trail. Oh. It's called Agua Florida. Yeah. This is actually one of the fluids that we 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 give it to the clients in case they get a little bit of altitude sickness. This is a bigger bottle. What, yeah. what is it made of? There are different aromas. This is only made of aromatic flowers and alcohol. It was actually invented by a New York couple hmm. that actually uh, clears up the sinus cities and makes you breathe better. Um, so during the trips, day trip that we're going to do, that will definitely help because our bodies will actually uh, try or your bodies will try to understand the altitude better. Um, and that will be a big help because during the day trips in Cusco City, like going on city tour, Sacred Valley tour or moving around, your body will be like getting into the altitude little by little. So if you control your breathing in case you get altitude sickness in Cusco City, that will help you a lot. When I will pick you up in Cusco's airport, I will actually take you to your hotels. And I will give you obviously more instructions, but the best way maybe to actually get adjusted, adjusted to the altitude in, in Cusco city is by moving slowly, you know. I know a lot of people get excited when they get to Cusco city, you know, and they wanna go everywhere because there are llamas everywhere. There are locals everywhere, there are stores everywhere, and they want to do quick, but if you move fast and and forget about like hydrating yourselves, altitude is gonna affect you. It's gonna actually uh, it's gonna make you dehydrated and during the nights you will feel you know your headaches and also you might not be able to sleep because your body did not actually get enough oxygen and obviously enough water or liquid or fluid huh. So drinking water or electrolytes is one of the ways. Second way, it's actually having this little fluid on it. And if you guys get to the level that you need oxygen, well, Cusco has many places to get oxygen. Every hotel in Cusco has oxygen tanks, so they can also give you that. But if you don't wanna get 
all of this oxygen and been sick maybe for hours or maybe one or two days, probably guys being taking it, taking it easy may will help you and always go in a slow pace and actually trying to help each other might help you. Diamox, a lot of people believe that Diamox helps with the altitude. It's true in some ways, but remember that Diamox is diuretic, make you go to the toilet or make you pee a lot. So if you don't replace the fluids that you are actually exposing in the toilet, so you will still get altitude sickness. Yeah, so you, you just need to replace water constantly. You drink and you you will, you will go to the toilet right away. Now, coca leaves. Coca leaves, it helps. Yeah, coca leaves or coca tea, it helps. But if any of you guys or any of your group will have like heart problems, I don't recommend to drink coca tea or chew coca leaves for those people because coca makes people hyper. Yeah. You can have coca tea, yes, as long as you're okay, as long as you know that you are fine. But if you know that your heart is not normal like, like other people, probably you may not have to, or you may not need to drink coca tea, guys, yeah? Remember, one of the alkalis of coca leaves is cocaine. Mm -hmm. And that makes you hyper, yeah? So the three days, Days prior the hike will help you guys to understand the altitude and maybe for the hike we'll know our bodies better and we'll be able to actually do and deal well with altitude. Yeah, now I mentioned it earlier that sometimes people, I mean, people, yeah, feel al the altitude, but if you get sick with a bacteria, that might make it a little worse. Yeah, so when you come to Cusco, or to Peru, try to eat in safe places. There are restaurants where actually recommended to go. There are local places that I'll point it out to you in our walking tour in Cusco City, once you reach to the place, to the city. Uh, uh, and well, for dinners or lunch, you know, when you will have them on your own, um, I can always tell you where, but <clears throat> don't, uh, I mean, try not to go and eat in like very, very cheap places in Cusco City, yeah, or Peru in general, at least before the hike. Maybe after the hike, you can try anything. If you survive the hike, nothing can kill you guys. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. So no, no street food before the trail, before mm. the trek. After that, mm. you're free. There are. <laughs> yeah. We have some safe places to eat that I know and I can take you because I've been, we've been working with those people and all the groups that we took to the place that were totally okay with the food. So, so but there are other places where probably you shouldn't go. Okay. Yeah. So if I heard that in the States, like, like any country, people can actually get uh, vaccines for cholera, right? If, if, is possible i mean just in case you know it that can be a good option too okay mm -hmm. cool. and in peru never drink never drink tap water guys cool and uh, <laughs> so on that on that note about the water so we'll, we'll have and ask everybody to stick to bottled water and then on the trail uh, we are getting boiled water from the chefs on a daily basis correct yes Every lunch stop and campsite will give you boil and cool water. Okay. So safe water. No ways that you will get sick with the water. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's provided. It's included until the last campsite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. On the hike, on the hike, you know, uh, there is, there will be like breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, and in between uh, lunch and dinner, like once we get to the campsite, there will be always chances of grabbing tea, you know, or coffee in case people like. I know like in North America or other continents in the world, like coffee is a big thing where people love coffee, you know. Uh, so if you, let's say, are addicted to coffee and if you don't have it, you know, normally one of the effects is like having headaches. So, so sometimes people get confused, you know, like when they stop drinking coffee, because it's recommended not to do that yeah. in the altitude, yeah? 
But what happens when people don't have something that they really need and it's a daily thing, it will affect them. And it will make it worse also with the altitude. So have your coffee if you're addicted to it, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point because you'll be confused whether it's just the addiction yeah. or <laughs> really high altitude. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you, Roger, is about the oxygen canisters. You mentioned earlier that they are usually available in the hotels. On mm -hmm. the trail, are we going to have some backups just in case? Yeah, we, you know, the, our company is well equipped with things. So we will take walkie-talkies where we'll be in contact with a chef and the porters who will be always ahead of us. I'll be connected with the second guy that will be with us also on the hike. So if anything happened, they will be able also to come back and, and help the people who need help too on the trail. Because in some ways, you know, for the porters, you know, the Inca Trail is basically a piece of cake. Okay. Um, and they just basically run up and down so they can always help people too on the hike. But oxygen, yes, we'll actually take oxygen bottles, guys, too, for the group in case anybody needs them, yeah? Uh, we get all the camping equipment like tents, you know, sleeping pads. We'll take all the cooking equipment, all the food. The group will have two chefs, you know, and the rest of the porters. So we actually work with people who have a good hiking experience in terms of porters, chefs, guides, uh, and all the uh, supplies that we need for the trek. On the Inca Trail, in, on the Inca Trail, we need to know we need to be self-sufficient, guys. Yeah, and we'll be self-sufficient, and we are self-sufficient of in any hike. So it will feel like a small community for the four-day trek that we're doing or we'll do on November. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there is a question about um, walking sticks, trekking poles. Do you recommend walking sticks for this hike? Oh yeah. Yes, hiking boots, walking sticks, proper hiking pants, uh, dry fit shirts. Yeah, uh, I usually recommend long sleeve uh, shirts because there are mosquitoes in in some campsites. Yeah, and if you they have UV protection, even better. Sun hat, windbreakers. It's the beginning of the rainy season, November. You know, so it doesn't rain as much, but we'll have some drizzles for sure. So we need to be ready for that. We'll provide some rain ponchos, but if you can bring a rain jacket, um, rain pants for the hike, even better. You know, that will help you a lot. Now, the campsites are pretty, <clears throat> are pretty nice, not as cold as other places. The coldest campsite will be the second one. Yeah, and the warmest campsite will be the third one. The second one, the temperature will be like, let's say, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at that time, because November is the beginning of summer, but the summer in Cusco, we kind of, you know, it's, it's a little different. The summer in Cusco during the nights is still a little cold, but during the days are pretty nice. Yeah, usually. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Walking sticks, hiking boots, proper rain, proper pants, rain pants, rain jackets, sunglasses, sunscreen, mosquitoes did are recommended to bring on the hike. Mm -hmm. okay. So we will be, uh, um, just an FYI for everybody who's watching, we will be sending a detailed list to everybody who's joining us on our group trip from November 6th to November 16th. We will be sharing a detailed list of everything that you need to pack on the trail, so that shouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about training because that's the mm -hmm. that's an important thing. I tell people if you want to have fun and have a pleasant experience on the mountain, you have to train. So what are some of your tips for people out here to start preparing for the trek? Um, I mean, for my first Inca trail, I never train. <laughs> <laughs> but I do recommend to train for you, definitely. If anybody's into swimming, good. Because okay. swimming is actually a good sport for to control your breathing and your lung capacity. Yeah. And if you're into hiking, 
and you have a good backyard where you have uphills and downhills, go for it. Just don't get that excited and run down the hills or run up the hills. Because on the downhills, we kind of we kind of need to pace ourselves, especially on the stairs down, you know. Um, hiking, for sure. Like, if you, if you can hike, you know, like uphills and downhills, I think the Inca Trail won't be an issue. Most of people I, I guided, and I don't know if you agree, uh, Haviva, you know, they complain a bit about the downhills part, the downhill part, you know, because sometimes people are, they don't have good balance, and that's why we recommend to bring walking sticks, because you keep your balance well, and in that way you can just go downhill on your own pace. Yeah. But also, going too slow in downhill is not recommended because you're hurting your knees, you know, by standing for too long you know or walking down for too long so that hurts your knees a little bit so if you keep a decent pace with the walking sticks i think you won't hurt your knees and you should be fine when you will reach the land stops and campsites yeah so just a little just a little training if you guys have time most of people usually don't have time to do much training you know if you find stairs, at least in some buildings, try to take them up and down, and that may help you. Yeah, but if you do have a nice backyard, go for a day hike and go up and down, you know, and that will help you totally for the uh, Inca Trail, which is which we will find hundreds and hundreds or even thousands and thousands of stairs. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the thing about the Inca Trail, which um, when I did it, I didn't expect a lot of stairs, but also the way the stairs are it's mostly rocks and uh, some of the stairs are pretty narrow so you really have to watch your feet and like you said mm -hmm. that's why using trekking poles will help you with stability and it can be really useful yes yes uh, so i guided people also who went to the escalator or incalator thing on the states where they're trying the train on them on themselves you know like trying to get or understand how hiking would it feel like it helps any little thing it helps remember that but during your training don't get hurt that's why i'm saying don't get too crazy yeah, yeah. let's say if you're gonna train and you find the stairs down try to walk on them on sideways so in that way it won't ask you won't hurt your knees as much and if you're going to actually practice with walking sticks, you can actually try to make your sticks like on the chest height for the downhills and go, you know. Remember that on the downhills, you should, your sticks go first and after you, yeah. So you got to first uh, stick, the, stick your walking sticks in a safe place that you can, it can hold your weight a little bit and after take the step down, yeah. And that sh you should repeat that constantly, and you will see that your body will actually understand the rhythm, and that will be actually pretty good for the Inca Trail. Well, on the Inca Trail, I will tell you all of these small details again, but since you guys have, you know, some time to get, uh, to train and get maybe an idea, uh, this can be a good opportunity, you know, to go on little day hikes, you know, or just climb a hill that you never wanted, but this will be a chance that it will make you want to go to just to test yourselves and see how it feels like. Yeah. So, yeah. Remember that on the first two days we'll go for from almost ten thousand feet up to almost fourteen thousand feet. So in two days we'll reach that elevation. Now from two from fourteen thousand feet we'll go to eight thousand feet, which is uh, Machu Picchu Inca City. I'm doing this overview, not like we're going to go up and after down. It's like a big capital letter M and after straight down and flat section. So it's not going to be just all uphill and all downhill. There are some nice places too, some nice flat sections where we can, we can enjoy and let our, let our legs rest for a little bit. What mm -hmm. is your favorite section on the Inca Trail, your personal favorite? Oh, I mean... My 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 favorite part is actually day two, okay. because I see people suffering. <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. No, 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 no. Uh, 
the Inca Trail is it's beautiful in general. Yeah, it's amazing. You you know a um, Habiba, a, but I think I think the day that I really enjoy the most is the third day. Yeah, third day. Uh, even for me as a guide, I even have more time to talk with my people, you know, and even like tell them more stories because I know we have time mm -hmm. to actually get to the campsite. We got the afternoon, you know. Yeah. It's not like the other days we're going to run. No, we're going to take it slow. But there's always the concern of like if we're going to reach it on time, you know, yeah. because the first two days are pretty long. But the third day and the fourth day are kind of easier. We got time to reach the third campsite and Machu Picchu and the views, you know, and the foresty area, the cloud forest, the Inca highway, the Inca sites also are pretty amazing. Yeah, that day, it, I would say, is my fave. But maybe, maybe other people, once you will be there, you will tell me, you know, which day will be yours. I tell you what, for me, I really enjoyed day three because A, it was easier and I was just suffering on day two. And also, I think what, day three was when we saw the cloud forest. Is that correct? Yeah. So yep. for me, seeing the cloud forest was probably one of the best things for me on the, on the Inca Trail. And there were a lot of llamas and alpacas all around. So I liked it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The llamas are there too. Yeah. Oh, by the way. And some so, wildlife. So what are some, some of the things, um, I mean, uh, just general tips about how to interact with the, the wildlife there and things that we should be aware of? I mean, you know, by knowledge, generic, ge generic knowledge, you know, the, the historical park of Machu Picchu, the total area is about 20,000 square miles, yeah? And in that little or big space or large space, we got 50 archaeological sites and over 18,000 species of flora and fauna, meaning animals and vegetation, yeah? On our trip, yeah, on, our, on, the, on the trail that we're going to follow, because there is actually people every day the chances of seeing wildlife close by us, it will be a big challenge. We might not see in our trail wildlife unless we are lucky and we can spot on a distance, you know, a, I don't know, golden foxes. A, if we're lucky, like I've never, I only saw once in all my guiding life a mountain lion that was like, you know, that's how rare is like we might not see it i saw a bear uh, i saw bears like seven times in all my guiding life and i've been guiding for like 14 years already um there's white-tailed deer maybe we'll see white-tailed deer on the way um there are snakes so snakes don't like people so they will they'll be away from us so <clears throat> um Maybe will be more chances of seeing uh, birds, yeah, a lot of birds, hummingbirds, the the giant hummingbird, like a lot of uh, hawks, falcons. Uh, we're gonna see maybe toucans on the third day, uh, all sorts of butterflies. You know, butterflies don't kill you guys, so you should be fine with them. Um, yeah, I mean, and the vegetation, you know. Uh, no one actually found poison oak on the bushes when they go to the toilet. Nobody got rashes from the vegetation, what I know. And, well, there are toilets in the campsites, too, and lunch stops. So in case people are afraid of going to the bushes or the vegetation for toilets, well, there will be toilets in every campsite and lunch stops. And if there are toilets, we got to use them, right? So... Wildlife in the in the Inca Trail, it's it's fine. It's totally okay. So, and the bears that I mentioned, guys, they are not aggressive. Even if we see them with the babies and the cubs, these bears will run away from us. There is no re record reported that a bear attack a person or a person got killed by a bear. No, never. There is no reports also of mountain lions killing people. It never happened. You know, because it's rare to see one because there are many people every day walking in the area. 
So one of the things that we will enjoy the most will be the vegetation for sure. Yeah, vegetation of the cloud forest, which is actually known as the beginning of the Amazon. So that is a neat vegetation, guys. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Roger. This is all great information. Um, if you guys have any additional questions about hiking the Inca Trail, please feel free to leave them in the comments. We will be happy to answer them. And in the meantime, I think the other question that keeps uh, coming my way is around uh, mm -hmm. packing for the Inca Trail. When in a, in a backpack, what should you have on your day hikes? Hair dryer for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and an oven. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no. That's a joke, guys. Don't... <laughs> there is no electricity on the Inca Trail, guys. Yeah? No power. So, in your day pack, you all will need a day pack. Yeah? Because that will be basically your partner on the Inca Trail. Yeah? On the Inca Trail, will provide you these duffel bags yeah these duffel bags will be the ones that will be provided so you can pack all your personal items that you guys will have access to them only at the campsites yeah but you will have your day pack every day with you so your day pack should be with camelback or water canteens yeah you should actually get water canteens or camel bags for like three liters each yeah so if you find a camel bag maybe that will be a two liter one or maybe three and besides the camel bag you still need to bring up a, a nice water bottle a reusable one yeah why i'm saying that because sometimes people don't want to mix the electrolytes in the camel back because the taste will stay in the camel back yeah but if you have an extra bottle you can mix your electrolytes in that one and you can always drink for that and mix anything over there yeah so water canteens or camel bags will be useful for your day pack i saw a lot of people bringing this osprey backpack which is pretty good for hiking actually it has a lot of nice pouches where where, where they are very useful yeah and also your day pack should be your rain jacket, rain pants every day, sunscreen, mosquitoes did, sunglasses, sun hat, just in case a warm, a warm layer like a fleece, yeah? And also a first aid kit, a personal first aid kit, yeah? Mm -hmm. Every person should have, have that. We all take one first aid kit, but we also recommend our clients to bring their own. If any person has any medical condition that is not that serious, yeah, bring the pills or the or the or the pills that they are recommended to take. Yeah, all be important for you. I saw a lot of people who have suffered with asthma, so bring the inhaler, please. Don't forget to do that. Yeah. Um. What else? walking sticks will be should be with you every day by the end of the hike you will be glad that you brought them or you can always rent them from us we got good walking sticks the carbon and aluminium type yeah that you can actually make it longer or shorter yeah they are pretty good for hiking and they are very light to carry guys so it will be comfortable for you in case you rent them from us but in case you want to bring your own you're totally welcome to do that yeah so your day pack also you need to have some snacks guys snacks that people are used to or or, or like it sometimes when people get altitude sickness altitude, altitude sickness it stops hunger but if they have snacks or food that they like maybe your, your tummy will be more like accepting that that kind of food and at least you will have some food in your tummy yeah so some little snacks will be recommended chocolate most of people do like chocolate i do recommend to bring chocolate you know also for your guides okay um you need to bring some granola bars yeah that i saw a lot of cliff bars that people bring actually those are pretty useful and easy to eat 
you know if you are one of those people who are like munchers like munching constantly guys bring a snacks your own we'll give you snacks but those are small ones you know that will be a fruit you know a chocolate or granola and granola bar but if you guys bring your own snacks that you like you are used to welcome yeah um that should be in your day packs guys every day you know important and never forget your headlamp or flashlight the headlamp or flashlight every day in your day pack every day no matter what yeah and now in your duffel bags obviously in your duffel bags you need to actually take some clean clothes to change at the campsites maybe and also your warm clothes that you need them also to sleep in during the nights yeah and also your sleeping bag if you're bringing your own make sure that the duffel bag is actually i'm sorry that the sleeping bag it's probably below 32 degrees uh, celsius oh sorry fahrenheit yeah below 32 degrees fahrenheit it will be the recommendation of the of the sleeping bags that you can bring for the inca trail yeah uh, and if you're renting from us the sleeping bags are four seasons the ones that we have and they can actually handle the cold without any problem yeah we also provide liners with the sleeping bags guys in here yeah liners are like a small little sheets that you can actually fit in first and after the sleeping bag on and you can just pass out and sleep like baby llamas uh-huh so pretty pretty much you don't need much on the inca trail guys yeah don't overpack you know overpacking it will make you carry things for nothing but if you if you want to overpack maybe take things that might be useful for you in terms of like first aid you know like band-aids for blisters for example uh, in your first aid make sure to have a small needle just in case guys because if you guys get a blister on day one on day two we gotta pop that blister no. <laughs> if you don't if you don't pop the blister that blister is gonna grow and the wound is gonna get bigger so it's better to pop it put a small skin on it and good to go it burns a little bit but no pain no gain right no. <laughs> yeah um yeah i think we covered a lot of things do you have anything else that you want to share with the, all of us here yeah i'm excited to meet you guys yeah. <laughs> uh eh, well the inca trail is one of the 10 top hikes in the world for the national geographic society so it's actually highly recommended to do the inca trail many people think that the inca trail is pretty crowded yeah until they get to Machu Picchu, Inca City. <laughs> Obviously, Machu Picchu, we cannot avoid the crowds, but on the Inca Trail, it's not as crowded as many people would think. Yeah, because the Inca Trail only sells 500 tickets, and actually 350 are the porters, and 150 are tourists. Okay. Yeah, so there will be more porters and guides mm -hmm. than tourists, actually. And the campsites that we manage are a bit different than the others, so in that way we can avoid the crowds and stay on our own if possible. Yeah. So since there's options to go to Machu Picchu, and one of them is by train, but all of you are deciding to hike, yeah, I will I'll recommend you to enjoy the journey, yeah, more than the destination. Machu Picchu will be there. You will take a photo of it, and I can even send you a photo of it. But your experience of hiking in the Andes, the feeling of it is way different. And you guys will experience all of that with us. So I'll see you soon. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, Roger, that's what I tell people. You can take the train. But that feeling when you work so hard for four days and you get to the site, you appreciate it more. And you feel like you really deserve to be there. Yep. Well, all right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Roger, for your time. I am so excited to see you and uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch and we'll certainly talk to you before uh, we see you in Peru. Yes. I'll see you soon. All Have right. You Take care and thank you.
everyone oh. in today and uh, thank you guys for all of your questions we'll see you in the next live stream bye yep bye bye